Hello folks, welcome back to the Keep Productive YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be ranking to-do list applications. Yes, I've got an application in front of me that will help me to sort out the opinions on my on the to-do list application market. Hopefully this video is a bit of a laugh and gives you sort of insight into what I think about to-do list applications in 2021. Before we begin, today's video is sponsored by Pipedrive. You can check them out below and we'll tell you a little bit more about it later in today's video. So here we go. We're using this application called Tier Maker, which helps you to like create like this chart thing. Then you can like rank them. So I I, I hate things with tiers in them now because of the way that the situation is <laughs> in the UK at least. So it feels a bit weird using this application. I made a, a bit of a mistake. I accidentally added <laughs> things three like three times. But here below, just below this, are all the apps I'm going to be ranking. I'm probably going to do this separately for note taking if you guys liked this video but you can actually do this at home if you want to i'll send you the link in the description if you want to rank the applications then send me a photo on twitter or you want to put a list of them in the comments below as you can imagine i've made a sort of rating system that you may be able to follow so the top one is super future <laughs> i've called this one super future i think these guys have the best future in the to do some application space they like the best of the breed and I think whilst I might not use them, I have a, a good future feeling for them. Next is great, which is just a high level um, sort of rating. Good is like, yeah, they're good. Like they're not anything amazing, but they're not anything naff. And then meh and is uh, like sort of like a, yeah, all right, yeah, cool. But then nope is like, yep, yeah, nope. <laughs> I don't I don't think they're gonna, they're gonna go any further. So let's 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 crack into this. So let's start with AnyDo. Now this is an app that I think is good, but it's not like anything special. It's got some really nice ex features. So it's I'm feeling erring on the side of between good and meh, but I'm gonna put good because I think it's good. It's not meh. <laughs> Next up is Columns. So Columns is a fairly new application. I like the concept, but I don't like the fact that it doesn't have the abilities in terms of like um, mobile applications yet. So I'm, I'm just gonna go with good. I'm not gonna have it as a special feature because I don't think it sort of sort of stands out in any way. Next up is Microsoft To Do, and I'm gonna put this in the meh category it's our first meh just because i don't think it it had a really good rally at the start of its development but now it's really tapered off and it hasn't really been working on itself and it needs to because they need to catch up with people like Todoist, the way that Wunderlist was heading that way. So next up is OmniFocus. Again, I'm gonna put this in the meh category. Um, actually, I'm gonna put it in the good category because it's a, it's a really one for those who like GTD and it's got a very system-based stuff, but I'm not gonna say it's great. I just don't think it's amazing. I'm gonna say Sorted 3. I'm gonna put Sorted 3 for the first great because I really like the way they use gestures to help you to auto plan and auto rearrange. I think that's a really solid future feature. So that's something I'm, I'm gonna put in the great category. It's something that I, I think does very well. Now, next up, Google um, Tasks. I'm gonna definitely put this in the nope category. Now, Google Tasks just doesn't have anything special about it. Um, the only thing that's, I guess, m like mediocre is about it is the fact that you can save emails as tasks, but you can do that in a, a few of them. And just because it's part of that Google ecosystem, they just haven't bothered with it. And that's why I'm putting it in the note category. Next up is To Do, which is actually Matt Diavella's choice of application. Now, I'm going to say it's in the good category. I'm not going to say anything special about it. I think that the application itself is like just good. <laughs> it's not like I really like the way you can plan and you're sort of weak with it, but it doesn't have any sort of amazing future, I don't think. Now, Tick Tick, I think for the, the value in money and also their development cycle and the speed, I think it's going to be in the great category. They are super fast to add to new features and also the habit side of stuff is really impressive. Like they're able to add these sort of additional features for devices and, and make it make sense still in this in the ecosystem. Next up is I've been avoiding 
uploading, putting things through there. This is my app of choice now, guys. Um, I'm gonna say it's, I'm gonna say it's good or great. I'm not gonna say it's super future. So that's why I'm gonna put it in great. I think it's, I'm gonna move it to good <laughs> because I don't think it's like anything special, but I think it works very well and does the job uh, good enough. Now I'm gonna put Todoist in great because I feel like they're always innovating sort of beyond a sort of experience and I think they do understand that the future, uh, what sort of future everybody wants um, and I think it will make more sense to do it when they have hopefully a note-taking experience to that. Now uh, people ask me like why did I include Trello in a to-do this application review and the same goes for like TaskAid and ClickUp and things like that. I mainly include it because it, it does a good job at helping you to organize especially for people who are new to to-do list applications. Uh, it's very much a beginner experience and I would say Trello, again, I feel like it goes in the good category, but I think recently, I think they've really been sort of trialing the the different views and sort of pushing the boundaries there. Whilst I think the pricing is still something they're like pushing up against, I think it definitely should go in the great category um, more than say the good category. Next up is TaskAid. Now I really like this application for the way that you can sort of blend it. It's, it's very similar to ClickUp in a sense, but I really like the, the sort of nature of the fact that you could convert a to-do list application into a bullet journal to into a note taker. And it doesn't feel like you're moving them too far away from each other, if that makes sense. And I and that's why I want to put it in the super future side of stuff, because as a to-do list application and as a sort of whole productivity ecosystem, it has a really opportunistic future. Now I tried this app called Claro um, and I did a separate review on it. I'm gonna put it in Mare. I added that one just as sort of like a, an additional one, but Mare is definitely not a good category at the moment to be in. I just didn't really get on with it. I like the simplicity of the concept, but at the same time, it's a meh from me. Um, <laughs> Zenkit to do, um, again, I'm gonna put it in the great category. I really like this application. I think it actually did a good job of bringing everything together after Vundalist sort of disappeared. And I really like how they're positioning this and much like Todoist as a suite of applications. So put Evernote here as a task manager, it's a meh. <laughs> I think I just added that one just for <laughs> a bit of a play around, but it's a definitely a meh in terms of um, its experience for to-do list applications. And finally, Habitica. I like this one. It's a good for me. I think that's the way that I view the to-do list application space at the moment. Uh, I've probably missed a few, but let's just take a look at that. Like, Taskade, uh, Sorted, Tick Tick, Todoist, Terrello, and Zenkit Todo are all, I think, very high on the list. But the thing is, they're actually innovating as much as they can. I think the Todoist application space is not as it was before. I think this sort of space with the all-in-ones like Notion and Coda and things like this, like people are actually looking at more of a system-based, like a way to actually organize without the need for a set to-do list application. So I feel like the space is sort of being attacked in a sense. So that's why I'm not necessarily gonna be saying super future to everything. The reason I put Taskade there is because I think they're quite nimble in a sense. Um, I've given goods to the majority of the one, even my own to-do list application, because I think they're like, these guys are like stable and they're not really doing anything too special. And I, I, I don't necessarily see a future. And I've given Met and Nopes to like the things that are really stagnant uh, in terms of the to-do list experience in the application. So folks, hopefully that was an interesting video. Let me know in the comments below whether that actually was anything of interest to you guys, because I've never done a video like this before, but do you want me to do it with note takers? Let me know, because I'd love to share my opinion on it. And hopefully this helped. Obviously, like go with an application that best suits you. Like if your one is on there, like mine's even in good. If your one's on there and you're actually like, ah, uh, uh, don't, oh, you're saying bad things about my, t say your application's uh, Microsoft to do, then don't take my opinion as the sort of be all and end all. Like I'm, I've given my one a little bit. This is more looking to the future. Anyway guys, a big thank you for stopping by. It'd be great to have you as a subscriber. So do hit subscribe. Please do check out Pipe Drive. Here's a little bit more about them. But before we go, a big thank you and I'll see you very soon. Cheerio. So folks, it is great to have Pipedrive back as a sponsor here on Keep Productive. If you don't know what Pipedrive is, it's a powerful sales CRM software. Now, since we last showed them off, they've actually released a new part of Pipedrive. It's called Lead Suite, and it's a fully GDPR compliant way to get more leads before they drift elsewhere. 
is a set of features that are available to add to any Pipedrive CRM subscription. So they include a chatbot for automatically engaging with your web visitors 24 seven, live chat, which basically adds a human touch, allowing you to take over conversations from the chatbot anywhere at any time, web forms to help you create really attractive ways to capture useful information, as well as Prospector for finding your next business opportunity from a global database of 400 million profiles. Now what's really cool with Prospector is you can build a persona of your target customers and use your credits to reveal high quality leads generated based on that ideal customer. You have also got Leads Inbox, a perfect way to manage all your leads in one central location. With all of the lovely features included like chat integrations, labels, filters and activities that you know and love inside of Pipedrive already. Now, if you want to try out Lead Suite, we've got an extended free trial of 30 days. It's normally 14 and 25% off your first three months. You can find the link in the description. Thanks again to Pipedrive for coming on to Keep Productive and we really hope you enjoy this feature spotlight.